Hello and welcome to Valerie in Belize, the YouTube channel that is dedicated to helping you plan the ultimate Alaska trip in 2023 or 2024. But as you might know, if you've watched any of the videos that I've been producing lately, I am focused on 2023 travel and I'm very excited because this is the last in the sort of series that I had originally planned. But spoilers, I am adding more Alaska destinations to future live streams. I'm not going to do them like all in a row like these ones, but wanted to get you the basics of visiting my favorite places in Alaska right off the bat. Have future videos coming soon. I will be sure to let you know when those are announced. In any case, today we are talking about Seward and I got to share a really quick story. Um, Jessica is this, this is the first time she and I have done a video. I previously worked with one of her colleagues last time I did these videos and um, she just graduated and was on a like three week trip out of Alaska to celebrate her graduation. And so when I reached out about doing this video, she was like, I'm really sorry, I'm not available the week you want to do this. And I was like, I can't not do Seward. Like that's, <laughs> that's not an option. Like we have to do Seward. So we ended up adding these few extra days at the end of January, one for Denali, who also had a scheduling conflict that's available on my channel if you want to watch it, and one for Seward, which is what we're talking about today. So if you are planning an Alaska cruise that starts or ends in Seward, if you are planning your own independent itinerary and plan to spend some time in Seward, this is the video for you. If you have any questions while you're watching the live stream, you can chat right with us live and we can ask and answer your questions during the end of the in the Q&A section. And if you are watching the replay, you can comment below this video and I will be watching those comments to make sure your questions get answered. And if I don't know the answer, I have Jessica's email and I will tag her in to make sure we get all your sewer travel questions answered. Without further ado, then I'm going to turn it over to Jessica to start talking about everything you need to know to visit Seward this year. Hi, thanks for having me. And thanks for the, the scheduling conflict and moving things around so we could still make this happen. Super Absolutely. appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I guess let's let's go to the next slide and start with the basic info for travelers and what you need to know right off the bat. Um, so Seward is not only a mountain town, but it's also a coastal fishing community and it has perfect access to Kenai uh, National Fjords Park. Um, it's a great destination if you have a long bus bucket list of things that you want to do, um, like hiking, biking, kayaking, dog sledding. Um, we pretty much have it all because the mountains are right behind us. And then there's Resurrection Bay, as you can see in the picture behind me. So um, lots of things, lots of opportunities. We have approximately 4,000 year-round residents. And that's a little over half of those people live in in town. And then a little less than half live in the communities slash res, um, neighborhoods outside of town. Um, and getting to and from Seward. So there's some important things you need to know. We are a cruise ship port, as you were just saying, um, but also you can fly into the nearest airport, which is the um, Ted Stevens International Airport, and that's in Anchorage, which is the largest city in Alaska. And once you get into Anchorage, you can either take the Alaska Highway by car, which is about two and a half hours, so you could either rent a car um, or take a bus or you could do the Alaska railroad system, which is another great thing because we're right at the very end of that. So it ends in Seward and you can take that there and back to Anchorage. So lots of ways to get to and from. Um, and as well, just so you know, May through September is kind of like the busiest time of year for Seward and the population actually triples in the summertime. And then once you're in Seward, a free shuttle runs all summer long. So as well as like renting a car is an option, um, there's a free shuttle as well. So, and it's very walkable. Seward is really small. So that's also like my most recommended thing to do is just to walk all through town because then you get to see everything. Um, and you'll walk by a shop or a restaurant and think, Ooh, and then you get to pop right into there. So, all right, I think we can go to the next slide. So this is just a really broad, um, list of things to do in Seward. There's the Alaska Sea Life Center, which brings actually so many people to Seward. It's amazing. I definitely recommend it. Um, great for families, but also if you don't have kids, it's just a really cool thing to see. Um, I used to go all the time when I was in high school because residents, if you have a year on pass, you can just go for free. So um, growing up and like in high school and middle school, we used to go like every other day just because it was a fun thing to do in the winter time when it's slower and dark. <laughs> um, you can do glacier and wildlife viewing tours and that's either by plane or by boat. 
we have kayaking and paddling. We've got a zip lining um, excursion, which is really cool out in Stony Creek, which is a neighborhood located right outside of town. Um, we've got dog sledding. Um, fun fact that Seward is actually where the Iditarod used to start way back in the day. So we have a, a memorial there and it's just kind of a, it's a cool thing, historical. Um, we've got ice climbing, hiking, fishing, shopping, dining, biking, pretty much, again, pretty much everything. And that's why we think that, or I think that Seward is like a really great place if you have a, a long bucket list. Um, it's a great place to come because there's lots of opportunity. I think we can go to the next slide. Um, so I thought I'd add some pictures and then just kind of explain, briefly describe them for you. Um, obviously, we have a picture of some moose on the right because who doesn't love to see moose? And you can see them on your drive down or by train or just when you're in Seward. And then um, this picture is if the tent is of Harding, the Harding Ice Field, which is um, located in Seward off of Exit Glacier Road. And it's one of our more popular hikes simply because there's a great Exit Glacier Visitor Center there. So tons of information. Um, and then also there's a one mile loop that's wheelchair accessible. And so a lot of people like to do that little one mile paved walking tour and then you get to the foot of the glacier and so you can see the whole glacier. And that's pretty much for anyone and everyone of all abilities, which is really awesome. And then same with if um, you want something more strenuous and a little bit more difficult and you're an avid hiker, we always recommend hiking all the way to the Harding Ice Field, um, which is what this picture shows. And it's about an 8.2 mile hike and it's um, definitely intense, but I would say it's super worth it. Um, and then just a fun fact about the area that nearly 40 glaciers flow from this specific Harding Ice Field, which is always cool. <laughs> And we can go to the next one. Okay, so fishing is a coastal, um, or sorry, Seward is a fishing coastal community. So it's a great place to take a fishing charter. We've got so many available charters. If you just walk down to the harbor, you're gonna see them all there, but also a great resource to find that would be um, across the street, there's the fish house, which um, they do fishing charters, but also they'll help you find a fishing charter if you need. And also getting gear and all that is very easy to do in Seward as well. And then um, we actually have in August, we have an annual Seward Silver Salmon Derby, and it's one of Alaska's oldest and largest derbies in the state. So it's just kind of a cool thing to come and see or participate in. And then I just put on the bottom, just like five fish to know. And these are all fish that you can catch in and around Seward, um, probably starting in May all the way through September. Um, I think the rainbow trout is the one that you would go to a freshwater source. And we have Grayling Lake or another area that you can go do that. But we're mostly saltwater fishing um, in the bay and outside of the bay. So, and then I have the picture of caught at Seward, Alaska. That's kind of like one of our iconic spots. And that's another thing that we always recommend families to do is towards the afternoon is go down to the docks and you can check out where they hang their catch of the day. And it usually it looks just like that. So it's pretty cool. Fun thing to do. All right, next. Perfect. Um, so another thing that you can do right out of the harbor is take a whale watching or glacier cruise. Like I said, um, we've got a ton of glaciers and we also have tons of wildlife. So it's super um, accessible through um, a couple different companies for going out and viewing these things. We have two large companies and then, um, and they do like, I think two and a half hour to nine hour cruises. The, those are the options for you. And they even um, take you to an island and you can have lunch. Um, but you'll just see, you'll go to a glacier or you'll at least try to view a glacier. And then also you'll see orcas and humpback whales and sea otters and stellar sea lions. And then we have, um, over 190 documented bird species. So I love birds and I always think that that's something that's underrated. And um, and then that's, a I just put down there on the bottom, there's a fun fact about the state bird is the willow ptarmigan and that's the little white bird that's on that cliff right there. And then people always ask when the best time to see orcas are. And I would say late May through June is like the best time to see them, but you can see them outside of that um, uh, little that time chunk. Um, so, but it's always worth it to go on these cruises. You just see a lot more than you can see from the shore, but 
um, I always recommend walking our coastal path uh, or just going into the harbor and you'd be surprised at how many um, different types of wildlife you can see just from, from shore without going on these cruises. Next slide. Thank you. And then here's my frequently asked questions. It, again, can you see what, where can you see wildlife? I think everybody asks that. And I was just saying that uh, I would, I recommend, we recommend always to take um, a cruise or do a flight scene tour. But again, you'd be surprised how much stuff you can see just from the coastal path and walking along in town and then in the harbor as well. And then another thing people ask, and this is just like a really broad question, but um, just sort of have everything I need for a comfortable stay. And I would say absolutely. We have so many different types of lodging amenities or camping, RV parks, um, hotels, and then as well as like dining options. We have so many restaurants in town. Um, I always recommend calling ahead and trying to get a reservation, especially for certain places. Um, like I said, in the summertime, the population can triple. So, and we're a large cruise ship port. So, you know, sometimes they have thousands of people on those boats and they bring them in and then, you know, maybe, you, maybe it was a slow day, but then all of a sudden it's a busy day because all these extra people are in town looking for places to eat because they want to eat off the boat, you know? So that's something that's kind of important to know. And then um, lots of just, fun, again, I was just saying all the fun things, all the activities that you can do. We have lots of really awesome things. So in and out of town. And then Another question that is really often, I always get this. So I just went to school. Uh, you just mentioned that I graduated um, from college and I went to school in California. And like nine times out of 10, when people would find out that I'm from Alaska, they wanted to know if I've ever seen the Northern Lights and when they can see the Northern Lights and where. And I think that's a great question because it's it's a funny question to me because they're kind of, depending on the solar flare activity and whatnot, but they're kind of always out and about, but because of our daylight, and then darkness hours, depending on the season, you know, the lighter it is, or if it's cloudy, you can't see them even if they're out. So that's something that, to note in Seward, because of our coastal location, it's cloudy a lot. And so sometimes it, that can make it challenging to see the northern lights in the wintertime. And you're most likely not going to see them during the summer months because of are 19 hours of daylight. So I always recommend if you're interested in that or that's something that's gonna make or break your vacation, I would try going a little bit more north if you're looking for the, the lights. Um, and then I always, I just wanted to shout out our visitor center for I located at the Seward Chamber of Commerce um, off the Seward Highway right before, right after you get into town. Um, it's just a great resource for things to do, places to stay, places to eat. Um, I, and our website as well, visit or seward.com is a really good resource if you're trying to plan a trip and you can email us at our visitor center and we'll help you make accommodations or help you find accommodations. Um, I just think it's really an under, we were just talking about this. It's just an underutilized resource. Um, the visitor center is so amazing and we've got locals that work there and they know everything I feel like even more than I do um, so I always like to say that as a thing that you should utilize is the resource or the visitor center and then I think the next slide okay so this was a big question I thought really long and hard about this because I was trying to think of like what's new for Seward and obviously there's tons of new stuff and we've got new businesses and um, and services happening but the biggest one I would say is, um, or that we're most looking forward to um, at my work at the Chamber of Commerce, we're really excited about uh, SMAF. It's the Seward Music and Arts Festival. Um, in the past, I think last year, it so normally it's inside at our cruise ship terminal and it's a really big thing and it's uh, usually in September. Um, but because of COVID, we had a lot of challenges and I think we had to cancel one or two years and then last year it was in or last year we canceled it and the year before that it was um we did an outdoor version in september which was very cold and it didn't quite have the turnout that i think the town was expecting or wanted so we're super excited for this year um to have it again and, and again dates are to be determined and location but we'll have more information soon so if you look at our instagram or our facebook that's that information will be provided fairly soon but September most likely. So we're just excited to have that back and bring some people in and, and have a good time and listen to live music. Um, and then 
Another thing that's new is just more winter season services and providers than ever we've had before. Um, last year was a really, really busy year for us, even after COVID. Um, the year before that, we didn't even have cruise, ship, cruise ships come in because of COVID, but we still had so many visitors. And we realized it was actually like a lot of local Alaskans visiting, which was just really cool to see. Um, but now that we have the cruise ships back, we've been really busy. And then I think because our population has grown in the past 10 years, year round residents, I mean, um, we have more winter season services and providers. So we've got like more like the Nordic Ski Club is a really big um, thing and a great resource and a fun activity to do to stay active and happy during the, the dark winter months, I guess. Um, and then I just mentioned below um, our website blog is a great place to find information about who's open, what's going on, things like that. Um, we update these sheets that have information about businesses that are open currently. Um, every two weeks, I update those and I post them um, for everyone to see. So it's really easy to find what's going on and what there is to do even in the darkest of the months. So, yeah. And then I just wanted to attach our calendar of events. Um, like I said, we've got lots of stuff going on, but I would say you can see that the summer months are the most busy and we've got the mermaid festival, which is a really fun thing to come and see and do. Um, and then the 4th of July festival is probably our biggest event that we have in Seward. Um, if you haven't heard of Mount, the Mount Marathon race, that's on 4th of July. And that is a huge thing. The town, like, I don't even know, probably quadruples or more, um, just on that day. And it's a mountain race. It's not an actual marathon. A lot of people think it is, but that's just the name of the mountain. Um, and I, th I think it's about a 5k up and down race and a hundred men, a hundred women, a hundred juniors. Um, and it's just really cool. It's really cool. It's yeah. So I always recommend if you're going to visit, that's a great time. Fourth of July in Seward is a really fun event to participate in. And then we've already mentioned the Silver Salmon Derby and the Music and Arts Festival. And we just got some other things. Shop Small is a really awesome thing that happens in the winter months before things settle down too much. So I always recommend that as well. And then this is a video. We don't have to play it, Valerie. I don't know if you want to or not. It's a little bit. We're going to play it. Okay. I think it's like five years old though, just so you know, but it was, um, I think Kat showed it in the last seminar that you did with her. Um, but it's kind of the only video that we have that I thought was like relevant and good enough for this seminar. So we can watch that and then we can probably do some questions. Perfect. Yeah. So if you've been watching this whole time and you're not sold on visiting Seward, let me get you sold. This is going to do it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All we have to do is run We don't have to go alone On this road together
Okay. I think that's it. And it is, my screen's being a little bit weird. I apologize. It's, no, I don't want to start it again. I think that was the end of your yes, slides, right? Yes. Oh, it was, yes. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, technology. You'd think after three years, these problems would have been solved, but okay. So we'll no, just jump back to something us. new. <laughs> okay, I know, perfect. I know. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let me close that so it doesn't try and start playing YouTube videos again, even though nobody else can see it. I don't want to get distracted. So thank you, first of all. Um, it is so... I, like I said at the top, you can't, to me, I understand that not everyone's travel plans will take them to Seward, but I can't promote Alaska and not talk about Seward. It's like, I it's completely just, agree. yeah, it's just such an integral part. And I was thinking while you were talking, I was like, we should do a YouTube video with a bunch of kids who were raised in Alaska as I was too. I think I said that when I emailed you the first time of all the weird questions we got when we left to go to school somewhere else, because right. there are some really good ones, including the Northern Lights. That was one that I definitely think getting asked that question so much as a young person after I left Alaska made me realize how special Alaska was. Totally. I completely agree. I feel like I totally took it for granted. I didn't realize yeah. how amazing and awesome that was, or even glaciers and things like that. Like some people go their whole life, not seeing a whale breach or, you know, it's like, I definitely feel very lucky to have grown up in a place like yeah. this. So you learned that earlier than I did. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a few more years into my twenties to realize I had grown up in this bucket list place and I wanted to share with everyone, which is why we're here. So Aww. let me, Oh, let me do another shout out. Thank you. You guys, I would say steward. And if you're the one doing the work, having that list of winter restaurants and even just all season, the restaurants that are open, what days they're open, their hours, that is, that's the best I've seen in Alaska. And I know it's been a ton of work. And so as someone who likes to point people to resources that will help them, Excellent job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I have to give credit to my coworker, Karen Cooper. She's the events and visitor center experience coordinator. Um, and she reaches out to businesses and makes sure that all that information is up to date every two weeks. And then I help her compile all that information into posters in a cohesive way that's easy to read and see. Um, and then I post those to social media and to our website blog. Um, and I will say that we do, we have gotten a lot of, um, uh, or thanks on that be for doing that because it is something that people utilize all the time and especially yeah. year round. I mean, in the winter, you know, hours and businesses, um, they change what they're doing so often or they have such funky schedules in the winter time because it's not as busy. Um, it's really hard to keep track of who's open and what there is to do. So we really try to stay ahead of that. And I would say even in the summer, like I was in Seward twice last in, in 2022, restaurants will have certain days they're closed because of just the reality of running restaurants in the world today and staffing. Yes. And it's not the days you'd expect. Like, I don't know that there's, nope. you know, we kind of expect things to be open all the time anymore and they're not. So having that resource, if you're watching, I will make sure that we link to, I think it's the Facebook page to me that I've always seen is the easiest way to consume that information. And I know a lot of my audience is on Facebook. So I'll link to the Visit Seward Facebook page because that's a great thing to follow if you're planning a trip and you want to make sure you get that most recent update right before you leave for Alaska. Yes, it's going to be the Seward Chamber of Commerce Facebook is the one okay. that posts those just so you know. But yeah, that's perfect. perfect. And, awesome. and thank you for sharing that with people. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, okay, here we've got a great question came in from Mary Jo while we were chatting. What days do the cruise ships dock? Do you guys have a calendar of that? Is that something that's available? We we do have a calendar. I'm I'm assuming that a calendar is already set for this summer, 2023. Um, I don't have it off the right off the bat for you right now. Um, but again, if you call our visitor center, which I have the phone number for, um, they can send you a copy via email if you're interested, or they can just tell you what days they dock and the schedule as well. Um, if you, the phone number is 907-224-8051, or you can always email visit Seward at Seward.com. So perfect. I, perfect. sorry, I don't have the schedule pulled no, up. No, that's okay. I, sh I should have. I, I honestly thought about that and was like, oh, I bet someone's going to ask what, yeah. what the schedule is. And of course I didn't grab it, but. And I wish it was easier where you could just say like Tuesday, Thursdays and weekends or something, but it's not. So these cruise companies, as, as I'm sure if yeah. you're an independent traveler, you know, there are so many companies serving Alaska now and they all want spots. And so many of them end or begin in Seward. It is like, here's yeah, what I'll say for you, Mary Jo. It's best to assume there's going to be a cruise ship and plan accordingly. Book everything in advance, get rest restaurant reservations, book your hotels yeah. ASAP. I um, was helping someone try and find hotels in Seward myself and it's, already hard. So if you it want to be in sewer, yeah. you're, you're going to be fighting with the cruise ship passengers for some of those yes. resources. I don't mean fighting. Definitely. I mean, it is, it is. There's only so many spaces to sleep in sewers. So anyway, assume yeah. there's going to be one that you can get that information, which is great to know. 
Yes. Perfect. Okay. So here's one. This is a question I got um, from someone on one of my first videos and they wanted to know for everywhere. Uh, they want to camp in the Seward area. What are the options? Um, we've got plenty of camping campgrounds and also RV campgrounds as well. So we have a KOA and then the Seward Waterfront Park. Um, and I think that's by this uh, city. That's my favorite one just because it's literally on the waterfront um, right along the coastal path and you get views behind of the mountains, Mount Marathon, Mount Benson, and then across the way, Mount Alice and Resurrection Bay. Um, but plenty of op plenty of options. You just, again, I would recommend booking ahead and those are through their websites or again, contact the visitor center and they can send you all that information and help you get that booked. Yeah, I will say if you're camping in Seward, you probably have the best campsites some of the best views in town. This, the campground oh, yeah. has incredible, incredible, that waterfront campground. And there is a tent only space as well. So there's like, yes. there's RV, only, um, RV, car camping. Yeah. 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 So, lots of and options. I agree with you, lots of options. And then again, like it is one of probably the best view other than a couple of hotels, but I think it's the, it's the same as the hotels. So yeah. yeah. And, and then can, right down, can. basically downtown. So you can, you're just like two blocks away from all the shops and restaurants. You can walk and, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so here's a question from someone who is going to be cruising, coming through Seward. Um, are there options for luggage storage? So they're getting off the cruise ship or they're maybe arriving early on their own and they have some luggage they need to store somewhere. What are the options? There are options. I think with your hotel, if you're staying at a hotel, um, I'm pretty sure that they some places will hold your luggage or if you're doing like Airbnb, um, it's just going to be really individualistic for those places. Um, and then I think there is one company that we have, I'm going to try and find it, or I could, um, send it to you after this. I, I don't know. I forget if we still have it. And I, I'm that's, this is bad. Cause I should know that question or the answer to that question. But, um, I, I'm pretty sure we have one place that does specifically just luggage storage and it's going to be in downtown Seward right on the main strip, um, near the sea life center. Um, I can, I can text my coworker and find out the name of it really quick okay. while we're, yeah, while, while you're doing chatting. that. And I will say, um, for, for Trisha, for your question, the thing that I found and I can't speak to, I've done, okay. So back up a little bit, as Jessica mentioned, there are two big tour providers in Kenai Fjords. There's Kenai Fjords tours and major Marine tours, major Marine tours owns, or their sister company is the Harbor 360 hotel. So if you are going out with major marine tours and you have luggage, typically they can accommodate your luggage while you're on one of their tours because it's a family of companies and they understand people might need to store luggage for a time when they're not staying at the hotel, but are on one of the boats for the day. Because obviously you're not going to take your luggage out on the boat for the day cruise. Um, Kenai Fjords also has a prop, Kenai Fjords Tours also has a property, but I don't believe that it does the same accommodation. It's also not in the central part of Seward. It's a little bit out of town. I stayed there as well. <laughs> I've been to so many places in Seward. So I would say, yeah, um, kind of check with a hotel if you're staying in a hotel or your accommodation, see what your options are. I know the Alaska Railroad also does some luggage accommodation if you're riding down or leaving by, via train. So worth checking. And then if you're doing a cruise, depending on your transfer options, um, they typically can help with that. So if you have a cruise company, reach out to your either your cruise specialist or the cruise company directly and ask them because especially for cruise folks, that's a known thing that they help with. They, that's a common thing that they've got accommodations to help with. Yes. And I found out the only one and only company that does just storage um, for luggage, it's Orange Bike Delivery. So okay. that's a, but all the things you just said is um, also accurate. You can check with the railroad. And then if you're doing a cruise or staying with Major Marine Hotel, Harbor 360, um, they also will sometimes store your luggage for you too. So yeah. Yeah, Orange Bike Delivery is the company. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We just had a question come in from Donna. So let's talk about hiking trails accessible from town. Mount Marathon is one. And it's literally, the Mount Marathon race is literally a run up and down a mountain for the record. You should look into it. Even if you're not going to be yes. there, it's a crazy Alaskan thing. It's just a cool thing to watch, even if you're watching it on YouTube or whatever. It's it's such a cool thing. Um, those The people that do that are so, so incredible. Um, so hiking trail is accessible from town. We've got Mount Marathon and we've got like, the Jeep trail or the race trail. So um, the Jeep trail is what I always recommend for people who um, are avid hikers, but but it's just a little bit easier to find the trailhead itself. And then it's switchbacks to start off. And then it brings you to the, the mountains. 
or the base of the mountain. And I think that's just a little bit easier um, if you've never hiked Mount Marathon because it is a really steep incline. Um, and then we have two lakes, which it, are in second loop. It's um, two lakes, second loop. There's a little, um, it's a really, really beginner's loop hike um, behind the lagoon, right in the middle of town between the harbor and downtown Seward. And then we also have um, I guess this is a little bit farther out of town. It's, uh, do you know where Lowell Point is, Valerie? Yeah, you just- so I do, oh. yeah. So if you have a vehicle and you can um, drive out to Lowell Point, which is the community along the along the coast, a little bit further out of Seward. It looks like it's part of Seward, but it's actually its own community. A little bit further out. <laughs> seems like yes. Seward's the end of the road, but it's not. <laughs> yes, so I would, I my personal favorite hike Um, And again, it's, that's technically it's out in um, Tonsina, uh, or sorry, it's out by Lowell Point. It's called Tonsina Point Hike. And that one is, I think it's a pretty, it's a moderate hike. So you could be um, a medium level hiker and it's not too bad. And it brings you all the way up. You cross a river and it brings you out to um, the bay, but on the opposite side of, not the opposite side, but on the farther side of Seward. And that's just one of my favorite ones because you see a lot of different things and you walk through like a beautiful uh, fairy forest and then you cross a river and then you're on like a black sand beach. So that's one of my my favorite ones. Yeah, I will say um, you can also kayak out to that part of Resurrection Bay. So yes. some of the kayak providers do a kayak out to Tonsina and then you can walk mm-hmm. on the beach as well, which is what I've done. If you've seen pictures of me in a kayak skirt dancing, which I use a lot in social media, that's where we are. <laughs> I okay. haven't done that yet. And it's on my bucket list of things to do. Even living in Alaska, you still have an Alaska bucket list. Yeah. All right. So here's a question came in from David. Um, the shuttle to exit glacier. This is always something I get questions about. So I'd be curious if you can give a little information and then point people to the right resource. Um, Yeah, so let me pull something up really quick. Sorry, I just wanna make sure I answer this like clearly and concisely, unlike the last one that I just answered. (laughs) Yeah, so Um, just while she's preparing that, the the, um, Exit Glacier is the one glacier in Kenai Fjords National Park that can be reached by vehicle, which is to say it's down a road. You have to drive a little bit out of Seward to get to this visitor center and the glacier access and the Harding Icefield Trail that Jessica was talking about. But if you don't have a car, there is a shuttle, which is what this question is referring to. Yes. So um, I always refer people to their website, exitglaciershuttle.com. And that you can book your tickets right on there and they have their schedule. They don't have an updated schedule for 2023. It looks like it's just 2022. Um, But you can do a round trip ticket or just a one way ticket. And then they also have a tab for offering like guided walks of the park and tours and such like that. Um, But it takes you out to um, their right to their parking lot where their visitor center is. And I want to say that it picks you up at our visitor center. Um, But yes, it does. So it takes people to and from our visitor center and out there. And yeah, I think it's like a 12 mile road, exit glacier road. Um, Of course the road has another name. It's like Herman something. Um, I don't think I knew that. (laughs) Exactly. Nobody, nobody calls it that. So I always forget the official road, but if you say exit glacier road, everyone's going to know. So Mm -hmm. I would suggest um, calling their visitor center or going on their website. um, Again, exit glacier shuttle.com. Perfect. Okay. Here's one that got submitted in advance. Uh, What are the options for a half day fishing charter? And I know you had five different fish, five common fish, and one of them was freshwater. So it sounds like there's probably some options. Yeah, so that's kind of, I feel like that's always a tricky question, um, the fishing charter question or the half day portion of that, because most fishing charters, to my knowledge, go out for a full day or a full day, you know, it's like really early in the morning and then you get back by two or three in the afternoon, but you're starting at like 6 a.m. And to me, that's like a pretty much your whole day. Um, But we've got tons of different charter companies and I would look at our web, our seward.com website to find those or if you just google seward fishing charter companies they're going to pop up for you um but i would say getting in contact with one of them for more specific information about how long a tour is and it also depends because you know some of these boats only take six people and some take more people than that so calling ahead and finding out the logistics because if you are booking a private charter tour then 
maybe they will be interested in only doing a couple of hours versus their normal um, full tour that they normally do. Um, but I would say calling and asking them for more specific information is probably the best answer that I can give. Um, and I hope that somewhat answers the question. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be more direct, Charlie, if you're tuned in or if you watch the replay, half day fishing charters are really hard to come by. Like that's the yes. this is the less di diplomatic answer because I am not a <laughs> member of the Seward Chamber of Commerce. It is um, basically if you want to do deep, deep sea saltwater fishing, you have to get a certain distance out to get to where the good fish are going to be. Right. You can't just right. cast a line and catch a halibut. You got to go a little way. So it takes the time to get out there. And then if you want to do freshwater fishing like salmon that have come in or trout, like Jessica mentioned, you're gonna be transferring back inland. And again, that's gonna take some travel time. So that's typically why you're seeing either super early starts that end by three o'clock and it's really a full day and, and or just not a lot of half days. In fact, I used to have one I recommended and as far as I can tell the operator doesn't even offer it anymore, probably because it's just not enough time. It's yeah, really exactly. it's an unfortunate reality. And you know, we gotta, we gotta yes. work with what Alaska gives us. Yes, well said. But also, I will mention there is shore fishing. You can sh you can fish right off the shore. Um, so I always recommend that too. If you're crunched for time, or if you're worried about it, or um, anything like that, then you can just grab your fishing license online or at the fish house, and then you can just pop down to the shore and cast your line. Perfect. Uh, okay, here's one more question and then we can wrap it up to keep uh, awareness of your time. So um, this is one that came in about where to eat. And I know as a member of the Chamber of Commerce, you're not allowed to have favorites, but you got to have a favorite. So it's up to you how you answer this. And then I will give my favorites so that they get this person gets at least one favorite answer. Okay, I'm excited to see if ours match up at all yeah. or not. And um, this is a really hard one for me because um, I, I would say my favorite like dinner place which is extremely hard to get a reservation for, or you like don't even think about being able to just walk in. Um, but I, it's always worth calling ahead, of course. But I, it's really tricky to get a spot there to eat, and it's the cookery in Seward. Um, it's just so I just think it's like it's very unique. They change their menu all the time. It's smaller portions, um, and I just think it's really delicious. And the chef Kevin Lane is just a really awesome guy, and his wife Stacy. They're just really cool people. They're local. They've been around forever um, and they employ locals. And again, he's just, their menu is awesome. And I love that it changes and it's just not like anywhere else in Seward, I would say. It's very unique, which is something that I personally um, really like. And then it's really hard, but I actually didn't get to eat there last summer because they were so busy and I was so busy. So like my schedules, did, our schedules just did not line up. So I ended up eating at Zooties a lot last summer. Um, I love their sandwiches there. And that's right in the little old railroad depot next to the Sea Life Center. Um, if you're looking for a lunch. So that's my favorite like lunch spot. Um, Perfect. Yeah. What are your okay, favorite so, places? Yeah. So I will say um, this is really interesting. Um, I agree the cookery, but I'm going to caveat that saying I have never been there. I have just you know, in my position, I typically like to go everywhere I recommend. It's my, my pre preference. But I've heard so many people rave about the cookery and I've mm -hmm. watched I've watched their menu. I've just, I feel, I feel super confident recommending that. So if you are looking for the one place to eat, get a red or get, get a reservation at the cookery, <laughs> get it. Like call, call them, send them an email now, try and get it locked in. If they're taking reservations for the time you're planning to be there. If you don't get a reservation or you want a backup alternative, um, I've heard great things about Zooties also haven't been there, but I had a fantastic halibut taco at gold rush bistro. Um, oh. It was not where I originally intended to go. I was intending to go somewhere else that had some kind of weird service stuff. And admittedly, it was during the pandemic. So service was, you know, tricky for everyone with staffing, but right. I ended up having great tacos there. And I've heard there's some other great tacos in town. So if you like fish tacos, um, that's a really fun option. And then I would say if you're a beer person, the Seward Brewing Company has really creative totally. beers. Like their beers are yeah. not going to taste like what you're expecting for the type of beer that they call it. It is the type they're calling it. They just do some really creative things. So if you like to try craft beers, they have cool, cool of flight things and you can do that. Uh, and then lastly, see, I have a whole list. I just wrote an article about this recently. I know. Um, it's so hard to decide. I, know. <laughs> I don't have to choose. Um, my question lastly, every time I change my answer all the time. <laughs> I would say the one place I've also heard rave reviews of have not been because it's actually relatively new is Flamingo Lounge. So this oh, is a um, Flamingo. Oh, yep. Yes. It was a previously under another name owned by a longtime Alaska Seward 
resident, much beloved place, much beloved watering hole. It closed and a couple that's from the area purchased it and revitalized it under a new name. And I've heard nothing but great things about it. And it looks really, really cool. So if you are into craft cocktails or kind of smaller plate bites, they do food. Um, yes. That is on my hit list. Like I will be at the cookery followed by Flamingo Lounge and Jessica will be with me next time I'm in George. <laughs> yeah. Um, it used to be called Thorns Showcase Lounge and they right. kept it. They kept it kind of the same theme style um, to keep that historical aspect of it, which is really cool. And then um, Matt and Kellyanne, like you said, they're just really cool people. Um, and they've, yeah, the craft cocktails are amazing. So it's, again, they've like kept, kept the old, but really updated it and made it their own super unique place. Um, so it's super popular. And I can't believe, I also haven't eaten there. I've just gone there for craft cocktails. And, um, but yeah, everyone has been raving about it as well. And it's a really cool spot in Seward. Yeah. Yeah. And if you didn't catch the trend there, Seward, like much of Alaska, is experiencing the same culinary revival revival that's happening across the nation in terms of often locals, but certainly younger generations of really food passionate people coming in and doing cool stuff while still honoring the heritage of whatever they're doing. So yes. you can get amazing food in Seward. Even the food trucks, that's sort of a new thing that was, I don't really remember that from pre-pandemic times. There's a couple mm-hmm. food trucks, especially in the harbor area. You yeah. kind of can't go wrong. It's it's great. It's great. You can't you can't eat wrong. But you now know the cookery was our overlap. So there's your yes, one recommendation. It's such a, you have to you have to get a spot there sometime and eat. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's on my list. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Jessica. It has been a pleasure talking about Seward with you. Do you have any final words of wisdom for people planning a trip this year? Please utilize our website, seward.com, or call our visitor center. They're more than happy to help, and it's a great resource if you're planning a trip. Um, And if you're coming to Alaska, Seward should be on your list, please. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so, so much for having me. You're very welcome. And thank you to those of you who tuned in live. And if you're watching the replay, hopefully this has been helpful for you. We've had about 40 minutes or so of just nerding out about all the fun things to do in Seward and where to eat. As you can tell, when you get two local Alaskan kids together, we just kind of get really excited about the place that we come from. And I didn't grow up in Seward like Jessica did. But anyway, um, if you like this, give it a like. You can see there's like a thumbs up. Go hit that button because that's really important for the YouTube algorithm showing this video to other people who are planning Alaska trips, but you have an advantage over them. You have a 40 minute advantage in that they know to get, they don't know to get reservations at the cookery yet. So (laughs) hit that like button and then go call the cookery to get your reservation. Um, If you've enjoyed any of the videos in this seminar series, including this one, and you want more like this, as I tease at the beginning, I'm going to have more of these live Q and A videos with different destinations in Alaska and other parts of the Western U S. So hit subscribe because that's another way that it keeps the lights on for this little YouTube channel as I'm growing. And uh, don't forget, you can leave comments in the uh, comment section below the video. And I think that just about wraps it up. So thank you again for joining me. And I'll be back soon with another Q&A. And good luck planning your Alaska trip. Thank you.